Welcome to the Robinson Street Corridor Study Workshop. This study is led by the Florida Department of Transportation in close partnership with the City of Orlando. The study covers the Robinson Street Corridor from Huey Avenue just west of I-4 to McGuire Boulevard at the Orlando Executive Airport. The first step in FDOT's project development process is to conduct a corridor planning study, which is where we are at now. After this step has been completed, the project will take the set of solutions that come out of the planning study and enter the concept development phase to conduct more detailed engineering. Once the concept development is complete, the department and the City of Orlando will work with the local Metropolitan Planning Organization, MPO, to identify future funding for implementation. This region's MPO is Metro Plan Orlando, which covers Orange, Osceola, and Seminole counties. It is important to note that at this time, the future phases of final design, permitting, construction, and right-of-way acquisition, if needed, are not funded. The strategies recommended in this study are intended to enhance the safety and comfort of travel and access by all modes, which includes those walking, cycling, taking the bus, and driving along and across the Robinson Street Corridor. This corridor study is being conducted to engage all users of Robinson Street by collecting meaningful input and objectively assessing the needs and opportunities. Based on the data and input collected, the study team has gained a good understanding of all user needs and land uses and developed potential solutions that balance these needs and the desired role of Robinson Street. The study process considered a full range of alternatives, utilizing the latest and most innovative ideas to identify actionable short- and long-term solutions. The study began early last year, and the study team conducted the first public meeting in fall of 2015. During this meeting, the team shared the current opportunities and challenges along Robinson Street. Since then, the FDOT has worked together with the local stakeholders to develop alternative solutions addressing the opportunities and challenges. The purpose of this workshop is to gather input from you, the Robinson Street users, on the various alternatives being considered. At the conclusion of this study, there will be a set of potential short- and long-term strategies to be advanced. So, why do we want to focus on Robinson Street? Let's review some of the key highlights indicating why this planning study is important. Robinson Street has been an important city roadway, tracing back its roots of Orlando's humble beginnings. It was on the city's plat maps as early as the 1890s, as a two-lane unpaved roadway, and then transitioned to a two-lane paved roadway with on-street parking. As the city of downtown grew, State Road 408 was constructed and Interstate 4 was expanded in the 1960s. Robinson was reconfigured around that time to the current four lanes with the on-street parking removed to add the new travel lanes. Downtown Orlando continues to grow today and Robinson Street could be utilized as a gateway street to support the city's growth. Downtown Orlando is made up of more than 40,000 residents and hosts almost 150,000 jobs. Between 2000 and 2010, the population in downtown Orlando grew by 13%, with more than 40% of the downtown population made up of millennials or young adults ages 18 to 34. As a major east-west roadway, Robinson Street is a key gateway into downtown with many regional and community destinations along it. Along the study's two-mile stretch, the corridor changes character with different land uses. These four distinct character districts make up the diverse Robinson Street corridor within the study area. Any solution being proposed should be tailored to and support each different character districts, as there is not a one-size-fits-all solution. From the field data and stakeholder input collected, a consistent finding was the need and desire to improve pedestrian safety and comfort along the corridor. Some portions of the sidewalk are not as well maintained, and some sections are extremely close to the narrow travel lanes, 
providing an unsafe feeling for the pedestrians. It's especially challenging for pedestrians to cross Robinson Street in front of the Lake Eola Park due to the number of fast-moving cars and limited crossing opportunities. The highest concentration of pedestrians crossing the roadway during the peak travel hours of the day occur around the Orange Avenue and Magnolia Avenue intersections, Lake Eola Park, Howard Middle School, and Festival Park. Often, these locations coincide with vehicles traveling close to or above the posted speed limits as the posted speed limit of Robinson Street is 35 miles per hour. The City of Orlando has generated a map of designated bicycle routes through the downtown Orlando area. Robinson Street is not a designated bicycling route on this plan, however Livingston Street currently consists of bike lanes. Despite not having bike facilities, the data shows that many bicyclists still use Robinson instead of Livingston. This may be due to the fact that many community destinations are located along Robinson Street. Currently, Robinson Street also consists of very narrow travel lanes, which pose a challenge to the buses. Lynx buses are up to 10 and a half feet wide from mirror to mirror. This often contributes to the buses being forced to straddle both lanes along Robinson. Many have lost their mirrors from hitting trees, other vehicles, or other objects due to the narrow lane widths. Understanding the length of trips and destinations will help us tailor potential solutions for Robinson Street. Based on data we collected, 60% of the trips along the corridor are coming from or going to downtown or a destination on Robinson Street. There are short trips, likely less than two miles, which could be completed by walking, bicycling, or taking local bus. Less than half of the trips are passing through without stopping in downtown or the corridor. Let us take a look at what these potential solutions might be. Through the continuous and lengthy coordination efforts between the FDOT and other partners, such as the City of Orlando, a wide range of alternative roadway designs were developed. These alternatives were applied to each of the four character districts and analyzed against a set of evaluation measures to arrive at two sets of corridor-wide alternative solutions. These solutions will be available for comment and input at Station 5 during the open house and on the project website following the meeting. The two alternatives plus a no-build alternative, also known as the do-nothing or as-is alternative, make up the short list of potential solutions. The no-build alternative would retain the four travel lanes throughout the corridor study limits. Alternative 1 will reconfigure the roadway to include three travel lanes with one lane in each direction and a center left turn lane with spot medians throughout. Some on-street parking will be added in the Central Business District and the Milk District as a part of this alternative. As far as bicycle accommodation, this alternative includes sharrows in the neighborhood district. Sharrows are road markings used to indicate a shared lane environment for bicycles and automobiles. They reinforce the legitimacy of bicycle traffic on the street and recommend proper bicyclist positioning. A higher level of bicycle accommodation, the two-way cycle track is included in the Central Business District, Lake Eola District, and the Milk District. Many two-way cycle tracks have been implemented across the country in recent years as they provide exclusive space for bicycles and are separated from motor vehicle travel lanes, parking lanes, and sidewalks. In the Central Business District, this alternative would include a through lane in each direction, a center left turn lane, a two-way cycle track, and wide sidewalks where existing. In some locations, a parking lane would be added on the north side. In the Lake Eola District, this alternative will use a five-foot easement to add spot medians and additional buffer space between the vehicle travel lanes and cycle track. Another version of this alternative includes a wider buffer between the cycle track and vehicle travel lanes and allows space for more trees and landscaping. 
In the neighborhood district, this alternative includes one lane in each direction with a wide center turn lane allowing room for wider medians. This alternative will accommodate bicyclists with sharrows or shared lane markings in the district. In the Milk District, this alternative brings back the cycle track on the north side of the roadway and introduces a parking lane on the south side of the road next to many businesses in the Milk District. Alternative 2 will reconfigure the roadway to have three travel lanes between Huey Avenue and Higher Avenue in the Central Business District and Lake Eola District and will maintain the existing four lanes in the Neighborhood District and Milk District. The four lanes east of Higher will allow for more vehicle capacity where traffic volumes are highest along the corridor and allow a higher level of bicycle and pedestrian accommodation where there are more needs and destinations for walking and bicycling near downtown and the lake. Alternative 2 will have a lower level of bicycle accommodation with sharrows or shared lane markings throughout the corridor starting in the Central Business District. On-street parking will also be added here. And in the Lake Eola District. This alternative will also include a shared use path along the south side in this district. Shared use paths or wide sidewalks allow both cyclists and pedestrians to be accommodated within the same space. As previously mentioned, the neighborhood district will maintain the existing four lanes with sharrows and continue on into the Milk District. One variety of Alternative 2, Alternative 2B, includes three lanes east in the Milk District to accommodate on-street parking for the Milk District shops and restaurants. So, how do these alternatives compare to each other? Both sets of alternatives were evaluated against each other to see how well they support the needs of we use several measures to compare the alternatives. The measures that distinguish the two alternatives the most are shown here. The results show that using both quantitative and qualitative measures, each of the alternatives supports the needs to varying degrees. The no-build alternative does not fully meet any of the needs except for supporting vehicular mobility. Alternative 1 better meets the needs of the pedestrian, the bicyclist, and the transit user, and is more consistent with the character of the corridor. This alternative would cost more because of the higher level of reconstruction needed. Alternative 2 supports downtown's access and mobility needs and helps maintain neighborhood character better. Speaking of maintaining neighborhood character, let's take a look at this need more closely. One factor to evaluate how well a potential alternative can maintain the neighborhood character is to account for the potential diversion of vehicular traffic to the neighboring local roads, which was identified as a very important neighborhood concern and accounted for by the study team. Our analysis shows that with Alternative 1, 70 vehicles are expected to divert from Robinson due to the potential for longer travel times as a result of reducing the number of travel lanes. This diversion is expected to occur primarily during the afternoon peak period. Of these 70 vehicles, longer distance trips will divert on more regional roadways and short distance trips will divert on more local roadways. The magnitude of diversion was analyzed and assigned on each of the local and regional roadways parallel to Robinson Street. As a result, the study team expects the downtown street network will be able to accommodate this level of diversion without much impact. Our initial analysis shows that diversion is not likely an alternative to as the four-lane cross-section is maintained east of Higher Avenue. This concludes the short overview of the planning study. We now welcome all of you to continue to the open house and explore in more detail each of the topics presented here. You can follow the roadmap given to you at the entrance to find each of the stations. Facilitators are available to answer any questions you have and receive your comments and inputs. Thank you again for your participation throughout this study process. 
We look forward to your support as FDOT continues to advance solutions that benefit all users traveling along the Robinson Street Corridor.